it's Melissa. In this video, I am going to show you how to go start to finish to print your first DTF transfer on the Roland BY20. So this is the brand new 20 inch Roland DTF printer. It is obviously uh, completely redesigned from the original uh, version of Roland's DTF, which was um, a much lower profile. And it this one has a lot of updates and improvements. So what you can see here is we have the ability to print um, just with white on the back of the design. We also have a way to basically flood the design with white so that we can get white um, that's printed in the image, which was always a big bigger challenge uh, with the Roland BN 20D. So we are going to start uh, start to finish. If you are brand new, I would highly, highly, highly suggest that you use a uh, Flexi Designer that comes with uh, the Roland BY20 because it makes it really easy. All of the color profiles and the white ink modes are already in there. So it's it's very simple to do. We just need to make a couple of clicks to get this white option to tell it how to print and we'll go from there. So I will meet you over um, on the computer where we are going to start in a DG Connect Hub so that we can open up the utility and go from there. Here we are in the DG Connect Hub and this obviously is going to show you all of the printers that you have, the Roland printers that you have. So when you're connected, you see mine says standby because I am connected via ethernet between the BY20 and my computer. So then when I am when I am connected, I can open up the utility. So I'll just click open the utility. It is going to tell me to load the media. Now my media might already be loaded, but it's going to warn me to do this anyway. So I am going to click setup and the setup is only going, there's really only gonna be probably one film in here because with the DTF, you're really just using film. You might have a couple of other ones. You might have separate profiles if you have different brands of film, but in most cases, this will have already been set up for you um, the, or not for you, but you did this during your initial setup of the machine. So we'll just click OK, and then it's going to say load the media, make sure the loading lever is down, and when you're ready to start the setup, you're going to press OK. Now, the machine, as you can probably hear, the fan goes on, the heater goes on, and the setup is now in progress. So that is what it's telling me here. Now, um, in order for me to be able to print, it is going to need to do a couple of things. So one is going to, the status needs to change to say output possible, which will, which will happen as soon as this initial setup, um, or as soon as the setup completes. And then also two other things need to happen. The heater and the dryer need to both be um, to the recommended setting. So um, what you can see right now is that the recommended setting for the print heater is 35 degrees Celsius and 38 for dryer, neither of which it is. So um, even though output is possible, I would have to bypass these two if I want to actually print. So while we're waiting for both the heater and the dryer to come up to the recommended temperature, we can actually move into Flexi Designer. Now, that can also be done directly here from the hub. Um, I said this went with the BN220, and I'll say it again, I really think that these two should be flipped in the hub. Uh, because the next thing that you're going to do is go into Flexi. You're not going to go into VersaWorks. In fact, you don't even need to go into VersaWorks unless you really want some advanced type settings. So for this, what we're going to do is we're going to click Open, and that is going to open Flexi Designer. Okay, so when Flexi opens up, um, a couple of things. You want to make sure that the edition that you're on is correct. So go to File and then Workspace. Make sure you're on default here. Okay, that's what you want to be on. Sometimes it gets switched for some reason. All right, next thing that you're going to do is you're going to go to File, and you can either do File Open or File Import. I'm just going to click Import. Um, and what I'm going to do is I just have a logo here that I'm going to open. Now, this is strategic to show you um, this design itself because it actually has white in it. So I wanna show you how to get this white to print. So not only are the letters, the text here is all white, but so is this banner, okay? So I'm gonna size this down just a little bit, so just for the sake of printing. Um, and I'm gonna duplicate this again, just so for demonstration purposes. So I'll just right click on it and then click duplicate, and I'll now have two copies. Now, oops. On one of these copies, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it as it is. The other copy, I am going to add the white underbase. So I'm going to select this one right here on the right and go to effects. This is ideally what you want to do. Now, it's going to depend if you are 
have a white in your design and you're putting on a white shirt, you don't necessarily need to do the under base. However, let's say we're putting this on a black shirt and we wanna make sure that we get white to print here um, so that black doesn't show through, then you need to go through this process. I always go back to think about if your design has white as if it's Santa's beard. If you do not add the white underbase, then Santa's beard is gonna be transparent and it's gonna show through your green shirt, your black shirt, your red shirt, okay? So just keep that in mind. So we'll click effects and then underbase and then solid underbase is what we're gonna do for this one. Now, what solid underbase is going to do is it is going to fill the entire, it's basically gonna put an entire layer of white behind our design, okay? Now, you can adjust this however you want, but this is essentially the choke. I shouldn't say it's essentially, it is the choke. You saw it had the, there you go, see, choke distance. You don't want choke distance to be at zero because that means the white is gonna print to the very, very edge. And there are times where it will essentially bleed out and you will show a white edge. We don't want that, so we wanna keep it inside a little bit. Okay, so once you um, have made your settings, oh, let me do that one more time so you can see. So selected, effects, under base, solid under base, okay? And then we're just gonna click the check mark to tell it, yes, I wanna do this, okay? Now, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go up here to this blue icon here and that's the send to device. So in Flexi here, I've got my, my two images and I'm gonna go to print parameters, okay? So um, media type, you basically have two options. Are you putting it on a dark shirt or are you putting it on a white shirt? Okay, we're doing dark and standard and then this mode is going to, um, default is CMYK and then white, okay? If you only want color, you can pick that mode. If you only want white, you can pick that code but, or that mode, but most likely you're gonna be picking CMYK white, okay? And then generated pattern. This is really, really important to the point that I have told Roland, my recommendation is really to gray these two options out. Those are, I don't wanna say dangerous, but 99% of people are not gonna want those 99% of the time, and all it's going to do is waste a whole bunch of your white ink. So always stay on print area, okay? You wanna have your design mirrored, and then you're gonna click OK. Now, from here, you'll be able to click Send. And this is going to send the print to uh, your printer and it will begin printing. You can see this massive difference here between adding that under, under base and not. So this is definitely the way that you are going to want to go with that. Okay, so once it's done printing, uh, you will just move forward with the standard steps for DTF, uh, which would be to uh, apply powder cure the powder and then you can apply to the shirt. So um, you can apply with an iron or a heat press. You can apply the powder manually or you can use a shaker um, and inline setup. Both of them will work with the Roland. So this Roland BY20 will hook up to an inline system so you can do that. And that's it. So make sure you check out all of the links in the description below. If you are interested in ordering or finding out more about the Roland B BY20, um, I have all of the links below. Make sure you also check out the channel, subscribe so you don't miss anything. I have tons of content on DTF, sublimation, uh, laser engraving, eco solvent, a whole bunch of different Rollins. Um, I we go into um, the Roland DG Connect Hub, so I've got all different types of videos on that. If you see something that's about the DG Connect Hub or the utility, and it says it's for the BN2, it will also most likely apply for the Roland uh, BY20 as well as those all use uh, DG Connect Hub and that same utility. All right, all right, you guys. I hope to see you soon.